you feel that if you accomplish this, if you have the money, then your life is going to work out. Then everything will be good. You're, you'll be happy. You'll be, you know, it'll, it'll just solve all of your problems. And it's a lie. Um, as a matter of fact, the wealthier I got, the more problems I, I had. What's up, friends? When I was younger, I used to put pictures of things that I wanted on my wall and chant mantras of success in the hopes that what I focused on would become a reality. I dreamed about my success. I spoke of my success and I envisioned and worked towards my success only to realize that I wasn't as powerful as I thought I was and ended up in debt and miserable. However, there are those that make it, so to speak, and with a full bank account, they are horrified when they realize that not only are they miserable, but they're also spiritually bankrupt. Today, my guest Mark Stein, a Jewish believer in Jesus and successful entrepreneur, will be joining us to discuss why success doesn't equal happiness, and what are we really chasing, and what brings us true joy. Hey, Mark, I am really enjoying having you here. Uh, thanks for joining us once again. That's great to be here, Jeff. Thanks. Well, you, uh, you've seen it and experienced it, the great chase after success, uh, financial freedom and personal glory. Um, I admit this is one of my, uh, it was one of my greatest drives when I was younger. I wanted to prove everybody wrong and show everyone how successful I could be. And, um, you know, I, I, even though people told me that, you know, if you achieve it, you know, you're going to realize that it's not everything that you've anticipated, but I wanted to see for myself, you know, I wanted to get there, um, and say, Hey, you know, at least I found out on my own that it either was or wasn't everything that I, uh, anticipated, but, um, what is it about worldly success, Mark, that is so enticing? And what is it really that people are chasing after? It's a great, great question, Jeff. You know, I, I think that um, the attraction is that you you feel that if you accomplish this, if you have the money, then your life is going to work out. Then everything will be good. You're, you'll be happy. You'll be, you know, it'll, it'll just solve all of your problems. And it's a lie. Um, as a matter of fact, the wealthier I got, the more problems I, I had. I mean, you have, you have, you have problems about how you're going to preserve the wealth you have. How are you going to uh, avoid taxes without evading it? How are you going to, you know, do, you know, um, there are just so many things. And how are people going to love you because you have money and and so um but when you're striving for it i wanted to be the rich uncle i mean that was my goal jeff i wanted to be the rich uncle because m my uncle the attorney had had the, the 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 head of the table he was the he was the patriarch of the family after my grandfather died and i wanted that role and i knew that the respect i think people see that in my, at least in a jewish home we identified wealth with a certain respect. Well, they must be doing something well. They're blessed. They've received all of this money. Now, it didn't play out that way. As a matter of fact, the more money that I started to accumulate, and at one time, as I mentioned in my testimony, in one day, uh, just a pile of money materialized when we sold a company into the public markets in which I was a partner of. Mm. And I was never so miserable in my life. And really? it, it was startling to me um, because I didn't have anything else. I mean, that was my goal. That was my ambition. And I had achieved it. I didn't, it wasn't like, I, at that time, I thought, I'll never have to work again. Mm. But it left me very empty. Right. And I, what I was searching for, I was searching for a, a certain a contentment, a, a, a peace. I was searching for the love that was missing in that big hole in my heart. And um, you don't find it with a pot of gold. It just it just doesn't fill you up. Yeah, you were looking for the adoration that you had towards your rich uncle. Yes, and I wanted, I thought it would buy me happiness. Yeah. And it does momentarily. Yeah. You know, when you buy that new car, you buy that new that new whatever, right? Um, it does give you a burst of 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 a contentment, but soon thereafter, 
it uh you know it's it's just vanity i mean it just yeah ecclesiastes just screams at you at that point yeah yeah it's a good book to read um for those that are wondering um about the hopelessness of life uh even those that that have succeeded and those that that haven't uh at least in the world's eyes what what do you say what what do you say about people that have you know have a certain level of success totally content i mean there are people out there that you know they haven't lost what they've worked for they haven't you know gone into depression and, and misery and they, they're just you know content living in a comfortable place i don't you know i don't need god i don't need especially don't need jesus you know i'm i'm, I'm good yeah there are a lot of there are a lot of people out there yeah in, it's um i think the last the last statistic i saw there were like 17 million millionaires in the united states and a lot of them that's are, that's a lot. I yeah. mean, it, it's like, it, it is, when you think about it, there are so many people that are just kind of drifting through and because they're confusing the comfort that the money is buying them with the contentment that they can receive. I was searching to be the rich uncle, but the riches that I was seeking for were not the riches that I needed. Mm. If you if you know what I'm saying, I need yeah. the riches that the Lord can bring, not the riches that the world can bring. And um, a lot of people get stuck on that side because their life is comfortable and they haven't had to face a, a serious tragedy or a right. um, any type of you know. Oh yeah. Re- Soul in business or mm-hmm. horse or whatever it is. So. Yeah. I know a lot of atheists who I love dearly that, um, you know, God doesn't exist until I'm struggling. I mean, they, you know, God is not there and, and I'm and I'm going through a tragedy. I'm going through a very th- difficult time. And then I and then I pray. I, I even have atheist friends that tell me to pray for them when things are going wrong with them because, you know, who are they going to pray to? And so... Uh, I have the same situation. Yeah. So, I mean... It all it all ends up fading in the end anyway. I mean, I, I've been an athlete for 39 years. Mark, I've been in the gym since I was 12 and I'm 51. And I just recently realized that I cannot keep it up anymore. Um, no, I've got I've got, you know, pain in my neck, I've got nerve irritation, I've got headaches and migraines, and it's like something has to change in my life. And I'm and I'm realizing that if if I hold my life and my image based on my physicality and my appearance and how much I can lift and how fit I stay, I'm going to be destroyed when it fades because it is and will fade. Well, that is so true. And <clears throat> excuse me, I think that's true with the wealth too, is that yeah. when I speak with very wealthy people, I have a lot of like Jewish atheists or agnostic friends and I ask them, you know, you know, you, you've accumulated all this money and when you die, where's it going to go? Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't get to take it with you. And right. and so what are you going to do with it? It's going to go to your children or your children's children or, you know, is it going to go to your temple? Is it go- Where's it going to go? Is it going to be wasted like the prodigal son? Is it, you know, is it going to be, uh, you know, is it going to cause a uh, family feud in the future? Uh, well, and, and that's it. A lot of the times, it, even many people, they don't even have wills. And I said, that's a sure way to create dissension within the family because they're going to fight over a chair. And yeah, and so if, if one of the cruelest things you could do is not have a will or or an estate plan in place, because how are they going to know what your intentions are? Mm. It's just lazy and cruel. So I, I think that there are a lot of, like we said, there are a lot of people that are just kind of floating through. They're afraid of death. They don't want to talk about it, and they don't want to do a, a will because if they do a will, they're so, they're so superstitious. They think they're going to die. And they don't want to talk about heaven. They don't want to talk about hell. Yeah. I'm doing the best I can. You know, I, I give to a charity. Um, we we you know we support our temple. It's just it it it's that it's that trying to convince yourself that it's all going to work out. Right, right. It, yeah, Jesus said. Jesus said, uh, you know, peace I I give unto you. Not like the world gives, I give unto you. 
How did you find this joy and happiness in Yeshua? Because I, I talk to a lot of people on the streets and you know, I, I talk to people here in Israel and I tell them about this joy and this confidence. I'm not talking about happiness. I'm not talking, because I, I go through a lot of hardship. And, but, I, but there's a joy and a confidence that I have in Yeshua that has only been given me through his spirit, through receiving his spirit. So I cannot say that I did it. You know, the, the, my biggest slogans during my Jubu days were, I did it all. Look at me. Look how great I am. Look how spiritual I am. Look at what I do every day in order to make myself more elevated and, and uh, um, more spiritual. But in this case, I was at my worst when I was filled with what I didn't understand was God's spirit at the time. And I, the next day I was full of life and joy. You know, how did you find this joy and happiness in Yeshua? And how do you describe it? Well, similar uh, to your experience, I was in a very dark place in my life um, where I had, I think I mentioned to you, my testimony is that I had, I had climbed the ladder of success, but it was up against the wrong wall. And it was built on, you know, the world according to Mark. And and it was a it was a failed it was a a, a failed process because my life was miserable, mm -hmm. my marriage was falling apart, my I had bought a business in which I was in litigation for the first time in my life, and it was like I didn't have a place to turn, and that's when someone was kind enough to bring Yeshua as an answer to Isaiah fifty three. And and say, here is you know here's what you're looking for. Right here, right. Rich is looking for. And at that point, that feeling, the spirit just gave me um, a quiet confidence that I wasn't walking with before. A, a peace that would continue to grow. And now people walk into our house, and there's like, we love it here. We don't know why. You know, why does this place feel so good? And it's because it's it's God's house. He lets us live here. Mm, and so love it. You know, it's it's just it's one of those things, Jeff, where the peace that comes is is so unpredictable, but it's so irresistible at the same time because his love truly is is unconditional, which Jewish people never have experienced in their life. Everything has been conditional and they have never had the opportunity to walk in this type of peace and joy and love. Right. Wow. I don't have anything to add to that. So I'm just going to say thanks. It's so true. It's so true and, and you know and we and it's our heart's desire to see to see everyone, I mean our Jewish people but everyone in the world come to know uh Yeshua and have a personal relationship with God through him. So thank you for joining us Mark. Appreciate it. It's great being here. Thanks so much. Now, since those times of debt and misery, and after coming to faith in Yeshua, my financial situation has turned around, but what I've noticed most is when the hard times come, I have a God that understands what I'm going through and loves me so much that he's there for me through my struggles. He's given me a hope and a sense of security that money could never buy and that pain could never take away. I'd like to encourage you, if you don't know God, our Father in heaven, reach out to him personally and ask him to reveal himself to you. He offers us riches that pale in comparison to anything we could ever earn here on this earth. In our final episode with Mark Stein, we'll be talking about why the countercultural concept of sacrificing worldly gain for a relationship with God is such a logical and rational statement. Want to know how? Well, you'll have to turn in to uh, tune in next week to find out. And if you'd like to contact us at Jews for Jesus, reach out to us at JewsForJesus.org, where you can also sign up for our newsletter, which will inform you of what's going on with Jews for Jesus worldwide. You can also chat with us anonymously on our website and even follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And may you all find peace, hope, and eternal life in our Messiah, Yeshua.